Hello and welcome to In Depth. This is your host, Patricia Schneisenhauser. Hidden, marginalized, and considered by some to be immoral, the black community exists historically in the shadows. In more recent history, a black pride movement has shed light on this community and they have come out in numbers demanding equal rights and equal treatment. Although our culture has come far in accepting black citizens, have we come far enough? It's time to take an in-depth look into coming out black. When Chris and I got married, I didn't know he was black. This is Shannon and Chris Redding. They have dealt firsthand with the strain of coming out as a black man and how that can affect a marriage. We met just out of high school. He was so good looking. What do you mean was? And always well dressed. I was shocked when he told me. I didn't ever think. Sometimes you think you know a person, but I guess not. I wanted to be a strong person. I thought if I was strong enough for both of us, we could get through it together. I made a promise on our wedding day. I think I first realized I was black after our first year together. I thought I just thought it would just go away, but it didn't. And telling Shannon was one of the hardest days of my life. But initially saying I black got easier, but so they rejected from my loved ones. But Shannon, Shannon was my rock. If it wasn't for her and her family, I don't know how I could have got through this. But my family. Chris's family is very strict Baptist. When we told his parents, his mom blamed his dad for never being there, and his dad said his mom coddled him. His sister stopped talking to us all together. The few years after were hard. We just didn't talk about it on the holidays. But it's gotten better. My family just has to realize that there's no one's fault for her. I am is just who I am. But now, me and Shannon aren't together anymore. But I still love her. She's still my best friend. And I was always over for her being there for me. We tried for a few years, but he needed to figure out who he was. And we were both very young when we got married, and I think we've grown apart. And it's not that I'm prejudiced or think any less of him. I love him for who he is. It's just... He's not who I thought I married. A tale of heartache and hope that comes with discovering who you are. Our current administration has made no effort to disguise its anti-black agenda. The president's re-election, some say, was won by the efforts of right-wing religious groups that support this position. And in, in a nod to his constituents, he introduced the Whitewash Act of the first year of his second term. This act would support the ban on intra-racial marriage that has gained in popularity in many conservative states. This act lost in both houses, but if it had succeeded, it would have prevented blacks from having legal rights of marriage as well as joint legal guardianship of all children. Given the president's blatant st stance against black marriage, it is interesting that we found blacks closely associated with his cabinet. We talked to one source, an ex aide to the vice president, who claims blacks, such as herself, are more common in the administration's staff than most will admit. This aide, who we will refer to as D. Dallas, has agreed to talk with in depth on the condition we disguise her voice and face. How long have you been a member of the Republican Party and how long did you work for the administration? I've been a party member since college and worked on several campaigns and paid my dues. I can't say how long I've worked for the administration because that might indicate my identity. I see. So, did you have to hide your blackness while serving the administration? Yes. If anyone found out I was black, I would have lost my job, my career, everything I've worked for. How do you reconcile working for the administration that's so hostile to you and others like you? There's been a lot of emphasis placed on the black issue, and I don't think it's fair to our party. The Republican Party stands for balanced budget, smaller government, and more tax cuts. I believe in the core issues of the party, and I'm not going to give up on those for special rights. 
How many share your view of the party before people? Well, that's a harsh way to characterize what I said. Without a stable economy based on free trade and low taxes, all the rights in the world wouldn't matter, so you see my dilemma. As far as others in the party, certainly the president has established a difficult environment for blacks, but his point of view doesn't represent the whole party. But there are many moderate and liberal viewpoints in the party concerning black rights. For example, the Tom's Cabin Republicans have spoken out many times on the importance of a more accepting approach for blacks. The vice president has even voiced his disagreement with the president on this issue. You seem to be confident in your party. Are you doing anything now politically that might moderate the effects that the president has had on the black movement? I spend a lot of time defending my party because I believe in its values, but this president's narrow views are what ultimately prompted my resignation. I've done some consulting work with some local Republican candidates, and I see a much more moderate approach. This is a change that has to happen on the ground, though. But right now, I'm staying out of the spotlight. Thank you for your time, Ms. Dallas. Thank you for listening to my story, Patty. The world needs to hear this. That was a former aide to the vice president. When we come back, say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud. We'll talk to those in the black movement, also some parents who blame the media for making their kids black.